everyone, welcome to the first um, AP Chemistry video. Um, I'm going to go through similar problems that are on um, the summer assignment, not the exact same, but similar same, uh, similar problems. And I suggest you might want to get like a, some loose leaf paper or blank paper and write down what I'm writing on this board because you don't have this document. Um, I just made this document and it's, it's similar problems to the one um, on the summer assignment. Okay, so the first set of questions where you have to watch a video is writing uh, the products are predicting the products and balancing synthesis, decomposition, and combustion reactions. Um, so we did this in honors chem. In synthesis reactions, you're making the compound. And in decomposition reactions, you're breaking it down. And in combustion, we'll talk about at the end of this video. To be able to do this, you have to remember that there are certain elements that are so reactive that they're never found by themselves in nature. And if you remember, we called them HVs. Um, in honors chem, okay? And these diatomics are H, N, O, F, C, L, B, R, and I. If you ever see these elements by themselves um, in a compound, okay, you have to write a two next to them, not a three, not a four. They all, they're so reactive that they react with themselves. So whenever you find them by themselves in nature, you have to write a 2 by them, or in the equation, you have to write in a 2 by them. Okay, so we are now going to write a balanced chemical reaction for the synthesis of aluminum, aluminum oxide. The first thing you have to do is write the formula for aluminum oxide. And to do this, you need to have memorized the charges, because unfortunately on the AP exam, you do not get that periodic table that has those nice, like, plus 2, plus 3s um, um, on it. So you have to memorize some of the charges, okay? So if you go to, I think it was part B of the assignment, you'll see I gave you a list um, of how to figure out the charges. So if you need to look at that, you can take that out now. Aluminum is always plus three, and oxide means oxygen, which is minus two. And if you remember, when you write ionic formulas, you want the char total charge of the compound to be zero. We had this quick method of crisscrossing the charges. So the number that's here goes comes here from there, and then um, the oxygen comes down, and the three comes there, and that's the formula for aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide. Okay. Now we're doing the synthesis of aluminum oxide. So when you're doing synthesis, you start with the compounds that make it up. I mean, not the compounds, sorry, the elements that make it up. So the elements that make up aluminum oxide or aluminum, and we're going to combine that with oxygen. Now, if you remember, oxygen is on this list. It's one of those diatomics, so it needs a two. Okay, then you write an arrow, and since we're making the compound, we're making this compound, this is what we're making. Okay, and the last and final thing that you have to do is you have to balance this equation. So if we look at what's unbalanced, we have two oxygens here and three oxygens here. Whenever you have a two, three situation, you need to make them both six. So we're going to put a 3 here, and we're going to put a 2 there. And then this 2 affects the aluminums. There's now four aluminums. So we have to put a 4 here, and then the equation is balanced. Remember, when balancing, you can't change the subscripts. You can't change these numbers. You can only put big numbers in front. All right. So now let's do the decomposition um, of iron 3 oxide. So we still have to write the formula. Now this one's slightly different. So iron, which you have to memorize, the symbol, symbol for ion, iron is Fe. You need to memorize the names of the elements. I don't know what else, what else to tell you. Um, and this, if you look at iron on our periodic table, like our, our um, periodic table we use in honors chem, it has two possible charges, plus two and plus three. Okay. This Roman numeral three is telling you that in this formula, iron has a plus three charge. And nitride, okay, is nitrogen, all right? So minus three, since you need to memorize that. Okay, um, one other thing when, for this to remind you, when the compound, when, when you're writing a, a formula from a compound, if it ends in IDE, um, it's, on, it's an element on the periodic table, except for hydroxide and cyanide, um, which are polyatomic ions. Um, which are, you also have to memorize, which are all in that same unit B. So we're going to crisscross do the crisscross thing, three and three. And you'll notice that these are the same. If you can divide something into these both, 
then you have to reduce it. These can both are both divisible by three, so they get canceled, and the formula is F E N. Okay. Now in this case, okay, we are doing the decomposition of the compound. So in this case, we start with the compound. So we're starting with this. Oh, my bad. Oops. We're starting with this, and we're going to break it into its elements. Its elements are F E and N. Okay. Now, if there were little numbers here, like if, which there aren't in this case, but if there were little, little numbers, we wouldn't include them here. When you're writing the elements, you just write them as they are. You do not carry over the subscripts that are in this thing. Because notice, we didn't use this 2 and 3 in this area here. So this 2 and 3, we didn't use in this area here. So now we have to check for diatomics. So if we look, if you look at your list above, you'll see that N is a diatomic, and it needs a 2. And the last thing we got to do, as always, is balance. So we have to put a 2 here and two here. And then the equation is forever balanced. The last reaction that we're going to look at here um, is a combustion reaction. And you have to remember that for combustion react reactions, you always take that the thing you're combusting, in this case it's benzene, you're reacting it with oxygen, and you're always producing carbon dioxide and water. Okay. That reaction never changes. The only thing that changes is what goes here. Okay, that's what always happens in a combustion reaction. Okay, so now we need to balance. And with combustion reactions, they're harder to balance. You always have to balance carbon and hydrogen first. Always carbon and hydrogen first. So if we take a look, there are six carbons here. So we have to put a six here. And then there are six hydrogens here. And there's two here. To make that six, we have to put a three, because three times two is six. Now I gotta balance the oxygens. Why the oxygens are difficult is that there's oxygens in both compounds. So in this one, in the products. So in this one, there's 12. And in this one, there's three. And if we add those together, we get 15. This one is particularly even harder because you're getting an odd number. And nothing times two, that's a whole number, is 15. Remember, we gotta balance the oxygen. So there's 15 oxygens. We gotta make it 15 on this side. So if you remember, the trick to this is what times 2 is 15? Well, 7.5, right? And then we can't have a half oxygen molecule. So what we do is we multiply everything by 2. There's a 1 here. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 7.5 is 15. 2 times 6 is 12. And 3 times 2 is 6. And if you take a look, it's balanced. Because 12, 12, 12 carbons. I'm sorry. Whoa, 12 carbons. 12 carbons, and then 6 hydrogens, I'm sorry, whoa, 12 hydrogens, um, 12 hydrogens, and then with the oxygens, we have 2 times 2, so 12 times 2, which is 24, um, plus 6 is 30, and then 15 times 2 um, here is 30, so the reaction is balanced. In the, um, in the summer assignment, there's one where there's an oxygen here. Makes it even harder, so we'll see if you'll be able to do that. But there's two, there'll be oxygen here and here, as always, because combustion reactions always produce carbon dioxide and water. But in this case, there's going to be an oxygen here, too, so you also have to account for that. Um, but we'll see how you can do. Remember, if you have any questions, you need to ask. All right, enjoy the summer assignments.